Yep, you sure can command it. Some other action. action. These are to other dash, actions. disengage, hide, you know, help. All of those things are things you can do already. I do no. not know why they didn't rework this feature. It does so not be reworked. This only has one meaningful bit of text. Yeah, and it's boring as sin. Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns of Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West. And today is another Marshall Monday. We are diving into the Ranger subclasses, beginning with the Beastmaster. Oh, it was the most clowned on option released in the player's handbook. It was clowned on to such a degree that they got a revised option down the road whenever they fixed Ranger. Um, but it all is optional. So you're allowed to use the strictly worst options you'd rather. I would use the updated stuff because it's better by like a lot. Uh, so much so that I don't, I really, really hope when they reprint Ranger, they'd only print the new stuff and they don't consider printing the old stuff because it was horrendously bad. Um, for the sake of this video, I'm only going to read, I'm not, I'm going to skip Ranger's <laughs> Companion, which is the original printed feature. And I'm going to read the replacement feature Primal Companion. Otherwise, I'm going to read the rest of this. And there were a lot of baffling decisions made in the update to this option, namely that the only option they updated was the third level feature, even though every feature after that relates to the third level feature, which means there are some weird holes that happen based off of how the new presentation for this happened. I just, they should have just given us a full revised one. I don't know why they... But stupid. They were stupid. Now it is genuinely pretty sweet, though, uh, even with the clunkiness that happens in the upper tiers. Uh, but we can we can just dive in. Yeah. Uh, so we start with Primal Companion. Again, this replaces Ranger's Companion from Player's Handbook. You can find this in Sanitize Guide. Everything, I believe. Um, this has these words. This third level feature replaces the Ranger's Companion feature. You met to summon a primal beast, which draws strength from your bond with nature. The beast is friendly to you and your companions and obeys your commands. Choose a stat block, beast of the land, beast of the sea, beast of the sky. All of which use your proficiency bonus in several places. You also determine the kind of animal the beast is, choosing a kind appropriate for the stat block. Whenever you choose, the beast becomes... The beast bears primal markings indicating its mystical origin. So, you know, it looks fancy and magical. In combat, it acts during your turn. It can move and use its reaction on its own, but the only action it takes is the dodge action unless you take a bonus action on your turn to command it to take another action the action can be one in its stat block or some other action you can sacrifice one of your attacks when you take the attack action to command the beast to take the attack action if you're incapacitated the beast can take any action of its choice not just dodge which means it gets upgraded if you get hit in the head very hard <laughs> the beast has died if the beast has died within the last hour you can use your action to touch it and expend a spell slot at first level or higher the beast returns to life after one minute with all of its hit points restored. When you finish a long rest, you can summon a different primal beast. The new beast appears and occupies within 5 feet of you, and you choose the stat block and appearance. If you already have a beast from this feature, it vanishes when the new beast appears. The beast also vanishes if you die. So while you're unconscious, it'll kill things. The moment you die, it's gone forever. Okay. The other uh, notes that I quickly want to touch on for this feature, there's three stat blocks. Is They're akin to the Tasha's Cauldron of Everything expanded summon spells, so like summon uh, Fae, Shadow Spawn, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. They function in a very similar nature. They scale your proficiency bonus, and they also get hit points that are a flat number plus five times your ranger level. I believe all of them are that number. A sky is four times your ranger level. Um, the quick highlights for them. So Beast of the Land gets Dark Vision, a 40-foot climb speed, a charge uh, ability. So if it moves at least 20 feet in a straight line and attacks in the same turn, it takes a bonus D6 slashing damage, and then it makes a strength save or is knocked prone. The save DC is equal to your spell save DC. Any, spell, any DCs that exist in these stat blocks, I believe, are related to your spell save DC. Um... They also, this one has the Maul attack, which is a D8 plus 2 plus proficiency bonus. Uh, Beast of the Sea has a 60-foot swim speed. It's got Dark Vision. It's got Amphibious, so it can breathe in and out of water. Notably, it only has a 5-foot land speed, so you really only want this underwater. The moment you take it out of water, you have to, have to carry it around with you, and it's a medium beast, or it's going to, like, very, very slowly crawl places. Uh, and it has bl uh, Binding Strike, so this gives you a D6 plus 2 plus proficiency bonus attack, or it uh, grapples the target. Notably, these are also spell attacks. That's also relevant. There's so many stupid little things here. Sorry, we're going to get through it. We're going to get through it before I complain. Uh, grabble things. It can't grapple more than one thing at a time. Finally, we beat to the sky. It has fl uh, flyby, which means it doesn't provoke attack attacks of opportunities. It's got a 60 foot fly speed, which means this thing zooms. And it does a D4 plus 3 plus proficiency to the bonus slashing damage. You would only really want this option if you were deliberately trying not to let the beast get hit. Problem is, it's usually really good to have your beast get hit. So I think you're not often going to take the Beast of the Sky, unless you need it for utility stuff. Okay. I think that's like 95% of what the text here is meaningful. Questions, comments, concerns? 
All right. First of all, you said the beast of the sea can grapple. Yeah, it sure can. All right. Now, if that's valuable to you, and you want it on land, can you slap it on top of a tenter's floating disc and just run around, run around with it behind you? And... Absolutely. Okay. Fun times. Nothing is stopping you from dragging around your octopus-inspired beast of the sea. I do think it's really funny that like. You pick whatever animal best fits the descriptor to your mind, but you can, if Beast of the Sea is anything that is related to the ocean, if you pick yeah. like a dolphin, it still has the binding strike. It still grapples things. I'm imagining this dolphin just like flopping around, just grabbing onto something with its teeth and not letting go. Uh, that's kind yes, of hilarious. All right, that was ridiculous. I, I was going to ask the same thing. If you got a dog on the land, it could still could climb 40 feet up a tree, no problem. Yep. Again, that's the mystical markings, the magic yeah. inspired nature of it makes it work, right? Um, more, more so with the climbing dog than the grappling dolphin. Yeah, agreed. Uh, some other things that I will point out. So the difference between the, the original printed feature and this feature. The original printed feature. Question. Yeah, the original printed feature lets you it let you pick any beast that it was medium or smaller with a challenge rating of a fourth or lower. Um, that was the difference. That would gave you what stat blocks you got. The big problem with it is you had to use your action to command it as opposed to Primal Companion unless you use your bonus action to command it. And we're going to see that come up later as a pain point as to why they didn't revise later features. Mm. Um, you used to have to forgo your attacks for it to attack at all. In this case, the moment you get extra attack, you still can attack twice, then bonus action have it attack. You could alternatively do attack once, bonus action attack, and have it attack a second time in place of your attack action. So you're not really losing anything there if you want the beast to be making more attacks. It's usually always right for you to be making more attacks because you have builds that incorporate things like Sharpshooter and other things into, you know, your attack rolls. But if you really wanted to invest all in on My Beast of the Land, you could have it make more of the attack rolls for you. You could have it make two attacks while you make one attack around. If you'd want, you're always commanding with your bonus action. That's always good and fine. Now, um, we recently talked about uh, clerics and uh, spiritual weapon. They're not having a lot to do with their bonus actions. Rangers typically do though i like rangers having hunters mark a lot of the time and they have a new feature that's a bonus action that they printed alongside this that lets you mark things it's favored foe uh and that uses your bonus action to set up everything like that so that is a little bit of a real like and if you're uh, ranged i mean you get, if you're making use of your crossbow expert then uh yeah there's that bonus action yeah i think you don't want to necessarily go the route of crossbow expert if you're doing Drake Warden or uh, this one, the yeah. Beastmaster Conclave, just because you are you know what your bonus action is. You yeah. want your bonus action to be making an extra attack. It is genuinely powerful, and having a second bag of hit points does a lot more things than a second attack does. Now, it doesn't scale with Sharpshooter, which is a, you know, a bummer, but it doesn't need to. It brings other different value to the table that I do think there is some novelty value in. Um, so, you know, I don't think it's a strict downgrade, although it is probably net downgrade as far as damage goes over the course of a game. Um, let's see, what else? Anything? No, my biggest question was how does this compare with the first version? That's fair. Um, the first version also, you needed eight hours if your thing died to bring it back to life. This just needs one first level spell slot. That's a huge difference. Use with the wait for like a full day to get your animal companion back if it died. Now if your thing dies, you get to it, you go, oh, don't worry. One action gains 70 hit points and get back in there, team. You're good to go. Well, that's another thing about the, the hit points. I mean, I the original one had a CR one fourth creature. That's not gotta. That's gotta be nowhere near seventy hit points, huh? Nowhere near. Yes. Five times your ranger level. Like it was comical how easy it was for your ranger companions to die. It yeah. like it typical maximum was uh its hit point maximum equal. They did it augmented, so its normal is four times your ranger level was just flat. It always is four times your ranger level, and like. A level three ranger having a beast companion with twelve hit points is not a lot. The difference in extra, like, five times your ranger level plus the bonus five is, the difference between 12 and 20 is really felt, and it does scale one extra better every single time you level up, so these things are hardier, like, substantially hardier. And way more importantly, when they do go down after taking 30, 40, 50 damage, you can spend one action, one spell slot, and it's back with a huge bonus chunk of hit points. These things are obnoxious to deal with because of how easy it is to keep them alive. Like... A Beast of the Land, if you don't get it away from the Ranger, isn't going to die as long as they have two first-level spell slots. Like, they will tank so many hits because you can just spend one action, touch your thing, comes back up with a ton of hit points. I guess it takes a minute, so you I can't mean, like, do it yeah, in a fight. Yeah, it takes a minute. But... You can't do this in combat. But in between fights, right, right. it will be back at full HP. You will have no issues. All right, cool. Seventh level so gives us so exceptional good. training, yeah. 
Uh, I like this feature. I like the rework a lot. I think you can have a lot of fun with it, even if this is a little clunky. So again, they didn't rework this for some reason. Exceptional training says beginning at seventh level on any turns when your beast companion doesn't attack, you can use your bonus action commander to dash, disengage, or help on its turn. In addition, its attacks are now magical for overcoming resistance to immunity to non-magical attacks and damage. So if you don't want to do attack for some reason, you could instead give a bonus action to have a dash, disengage, or help. You might know, Bob. You could already do that. <laughs> That's that just isn't text anymore. You can already bonus action to tell it to dash to get your hide. Yeah, that's uh, I don't know why they did that. I don't either. Uh, I'm gonna reread real quick just like to make sure. Uh, unless you take a bonus action, command to take another action. The action be on its stat block or some other action. Yep, you sure can command it. Some other action. action. These are other dash, actions. disengage, hide, you know, help. All of those things are things you can do already. I do not no. know why they didn't rework this feature. It doesn't so be reworked. This only has one meaningful bit of text. Yeah, and it's boring as sin. Yeah. And the man relevant, uh, but boring as sin. Um, sometimes relevant. Yeah. Why I don't know why they didn't rework this. Right? Like, isn't this stupid? Well, yeah. I mean it doesn't feel would did that make a meaningful difference with the uh first version? The meaningful the first version, you really struggle to do anything productive with it, like, ever. What often would look like a exceptional training in my limited experience with the option was that you made two attacks and your bonus action was having it help you. So your beast just kind of stood around near you trying to take hits and help, giving you the help action to make your attacks hit because your attacks were better than its. Right? That was generally my experience with exceptional training. Um, so it was a an awful feature when it released. Don't worry. It wasn't good then. Um, and it is sure not good now. No, I mean, even if my beast couldn't do any of this stuff, this is not exciting enough for me to justify a seven level feature. Look, dash, yay. Yep. And again, fun fact, you already got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm saying even uh, if I didn't. I would like to point out, uh, if you are a halfling ranger or other small race, uh, you can ride your land beast and then you can command it to dash's bonus action and you can zoom. That's, That's cool. kind of fun. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of fun. Um, but like you already can do that. That's agnostic of the seventh level feature that is hot trash. Uh, yeah. It is a meaningful improvement, and it should deserve to have a cool thing attached to it, so that you could have your beast meaningfully attack like things that are mag resistant to non magical damage. I'm. It's also. I don't. It is a magical being. So I don't. I don't think it's. Oh wait 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 whoa, wait, whoa, wait, whoa. wait wait. So the. They were. Oh, this is okay. I hate. I hate <laughs> how all of this is worded. So the, the weapon attacks, I said earlier they were spell attacks, they are not. You add your spell attack modifier to hit, but they are melee weapon attacks. Okay, so they are mundane melee weapon attacks that they're making, so they will qualify as mundane bludgeoning slashing piercing damage, so this is still meaningfully improving your feature. Okay, great. Not Glad enough. I checked that out myself. Not enough that it is worth considering being excited about. Uh, right. 11th level gives us Bestial Fury. These are so short. So starting at 11th level, when you command your Beast Companion to take the attack action, the Beast can make two attacks or can take a multi-attack action if it has one. Well, that last bit no longer matters. But this is just multi-attack for your thing now, so now you're making four attacks on your turn. So you attack, attack, bonus action, attack, attack. That's kind of sweet. I'm here yeah. for that. You can even have your Beast make three attacks because you attack for go one, it attacks, and then you attack, attacks. That's pretty sweet, right? Sure, yeah. I think that's what, how it works. What kind of, what kind of damage are your Beast doing here? So they all scale your proficiency bonus. The highest one is land, and that does a D8 plus uh, D8 plus a number two plus your proficiency bonus. So by 11th level, it's like a D8 plus six. So it's getting three D8 plus uh, 18. That's a pretty decent chunk of damage. Yeah. Every round? Yeah, why not? Um, you're the bird is the worst one. It's doing a D4 plus three plus proficiency bonus. But the most of this damage is still coming from mods. So like you're going down a little bit, but you might value it staying up and harrying back and forth. And like, you know, dive bombing if you really wanted to do two. That could be fine. I honestly don't hate it, especially on characters that want to play the the like the the hawk master. You know, the one that's got the the grip on their arm and they are right. flying off a longbow and they're like marking their targets and stuff. That seems like a really cool little fantasy that this does well enough. Uh, oh, I definitely question. Yeah. Does this work with something like Hunter's Mark? Did your did your beast attacks no. get the no? All right. Only you. Your weapon okay. attacks are the ones that are empowered. They are separate entities. They do not get the bonus from your Hunter's Mark, nor your favorite foe. That's a little bit of Yeah. This really does have big anti synergy. That, that with could have been the, new the seventh feature. level feature. As they can they can scale with your hunter's mark and favorite foe. I think that would be cool. 
Yeah. But again, it's still awkward because of the bonus action cost, right? Like, there's always yeah. that little hiccup in your head where it's like, oh, but I don't have to set up my bonus action. So you're just often not going to take the things that use your bonus action. You're going to get a favorite foe for playing the new favor or new option, get level three, and then never use it ever again so long as your companion is alive. So that's going to be fun. This is honestly a fine little upgrade. I like this as a, a if you're going to learn this game, I, these kinds of upgrades for your subclass make sense to me as like a first on route where you, uh, unfortunately, the level three feature is a novel and you have a whole extra character to keep track of, but at least as the game progresses, you don't have to like, your features improve as you would hope they would in a simple and powerful fashion. I think this is a simple and powerful enough fashion. It's not like breaking the game but after I, anything, I think, but it's, it's neat. I think a new player is going to be excited enough about having a little beast friend that, uh, they're they're willing to read that novel. Sometimes, I have <laughs> I have I've DM for a lot of new people, and I've DM for a lot of people who want to play druids and rangers. And there is a genuine hurdle whenever it comes to dissecting things like wild shape, dissecting things like summon uh, summon beast. And this is, I think, yeah. akin to that. The moment you look at this kind of stat block a lot of people's eyes just glaze over, right? They're like, I don't even begin to know how to navigate this because there are genuinely layers and layers of secret rules in here that you have to understand to get a fundamental grip of what these things do. And most of them don't matter in the moment. Most of them don't matter right now. They're going to be struggling to be like, what's your beast's AC? What ends up happening is I just memorize all that crap because I do this a lot. So I just know what their beast AC is and I go, okay, my attack hits your beast, right? As opposed to having to ask them, what is your thing's hit points? What is your thing's X, Y, or Z? That's why, oh, it says hit dice. What is that reference for my, how does that matter for my bees? I don't know how many hit points it says. It's five plus my ranger level. Why are these in parentheses? And then you looks over to like, oh, it's got this charge thing, but it, it, it best move it in a straight line and it hits with a mall attack on the same turn. But like, does it, can I use its mall? Is it doing this? What's happening? There's a lot of unfortunate hiccups that genuinely are added to the new player experience. I would say it's better than the old version because they're not sifting through the CR one fourth options. Like they don't have to have a monster manual for it to function, but it's still not great. As far as like learning goes, there's a lot sure. of complexity that genuinely makes it hard to play these options for people that are learning the game. All right. Sorry. So box aside, we're under level 15. Uh, whoever, the, the person that regularly comments about fine steed, this is your moment. So this is share spells <laughs> at 15th level. When you cast a spell targeting only yourself, you can also affect your beast companion with a spell the beast within 30 feet of you. That's sweet. I love that. Is uh, it good? Just, just the... It's neat. Well... I mean, the more that guy comments, the the better this gets. Um, but then again, we're working with ranger spells, so I guess that's a bit of a downgrade, huh? A little bit. I uh, I do think they're like off the top of my head. Spells that you'd want to cast with this, ah, uh, almost none jump to mind. Like you only you get. You're fifth, you're all, you're getting this at level fifteen, which means you committed a fifteen level stranger, so you're not probably doing other multi class stuff. Yeah. So in that window, you've got like you could cast Long Strider. <laughs> now you're both faster. Uh there's Wrath of Nature is a cool one. I think that's a self cast. Let me double check. Uh range is 120 feet, and then this specifies whenever you cast a spell targeting only yourself. Yeah, so Wrath of Nature should be good. Um I think I could be wrong. I'm assuming that one only target. It doesn't even target you. It's just got a range. Oh, God, I don't no, know. Then probably not. Maybe. You follow the spirits, choose a point with a range. The spirits, yeah, never mind. doesn't work with Wrath of Nature. Uh, tree Stride. It works with Tree Stride, I think. Let's you and your beast walk through trees. Yep, that right. that has range of self. That works. Uh, My yeah, point there, is, uh, though, I mean, you're stuck with ranger spells because you're level 15. You're not getting... I mean, you could multi-class after that and, you know, get a couple wizard spells, like low-level stuff. But you're not getting Crown of Stars on your uh, your your dog or whatever. No. The, like, yeah, Feinstein's best place is on Bard because Bard yes. is a full caster. So, like, it's really nuts there. Ranger doesn't have that luxury. Um, I have yeah. found one that's neat. It's Guardian of Nature. That's the one I was thinking of whenever I th thought Wrath of Nature was this. That lets you pick either Great Tree or Primal Beast and it gives you a bunch of bones. So Primal Beast gives you makes you faster, gives you advantage on strength-based weapon attacks, your melee attacks do a bonus D6 force damage. Doubling that is pretty meaningful. So like if your beast is getting this bonus D6 and it's making three attacks and you're making two attacks, it's five D6 damage around with strength-based weapons. The ground one wants to knock things prone, so you're gonna have advantage on those attack rolls a lot of the time. It's gonna be pretty sweet. There's some cute things that can happen there that I, I do like quite a bit. 
it. If you really want to like lock down difficult terrain, great tree gives you uh, ground around you's difficult terrain and 50 foot cube. That's cute. And then you have two giant areas of difficult terrain. Maybe that's good. Uh, I have a least... tree and so is my dolphin. <laughs> exactly. That's at least novel, right? That's kind of cute. Uh, stone skin is not great, but does work this way. So you could double up your stone skins. You could double up your freedom of movements. Um, there aren't a lot that are super exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah, just you know, being a half caster and the nature of ranger, most ranger spells, uh, I'm having a hard time with this one. So I will say, your lava or top end features blow. So this is a good reason to go find five levels in a full caster that's got better self cast effects. Then you can just like use those levels as cool new ways to try and empower your familiar or your uh, your summon companion. That that is a novel thing you could attempt to do. That I think yeah. could be interesting design at least. Oh oh, you like Asher Dolan's stride, right? That works. Now you're both on fire, running around, putting things on fire. That gets kind of cute, right? Yeah, yeah. There are reasons in just Ranger that are like technically fine. I like that it doubles protection from energy. Um. That's not like super super impactful. I think the big the big one definitely is Guardian of Nature. This is definitely the one that you're gonna lead towards the most. It helps that the level fifteen you'll have access to fourth level spells. So you'll be like, okay, now we both can kind of double up on this. It's gonna come nowhere close to being as powerful or interesting as like a real top level feature. But hey, it's cute. It's neat. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Not really. No, I'm not. I'm not nearly as high on this as I am on a a bard with fine seed. I know. Uh, that, that Bard with Fine Steel feels like it's a similar munchkin camp to like Sorcerer Warlocks. That's, yeah. you know, do, not the game as intended, but things that you can do within the realms of it. This is game as intended. Right, and, even, oh, yeah, this is kind of sucks. No, because even regular Fine Steel, that's uh, Paladin still Paladin. have caster. But I think uh, I know, Paladin's got to have better options for self spells, though. So mm. Maybe. We don't have to look that up. The right self now. spells aren't that great, generally speaking. Yeah. So. But um, all together, that are nice and abusable. That's true. Altogether, this thing definitely is carried by a third level feature. Obviously, that's why it's a novel, and the rest of this text could be summed up within a single block. Within, like, the total text here is like shorter than some of the features that the monsters get. Like, Binding Strike is as oh, long as Beastial Fury and Shared Spells combined. It's plenty shorter than you know the first feature. Oh yeah, I'm definitely so. That being said, like, if you wanted to be Master Ranger, I would not fault you, and I do think it's perfectly fine like i think bestial fury and the base feature combine to give you a real summoned ally that is powerful that you can keep alive that you can switch forms when you go to underwater venture you have the c1 when you go above uh ground you have two different cool options to go with i think land is like almost always the right option to pick but you you can do whatever appearance you want with this you can play the falconer you can play the drift steward and clone you can do all kinds of specific fantasies with this that i think are going to be satisfied in a meaningful way just because the updated Primal Companion is bonus action extra attack, and that's just going to be good. It's going to be good on a lot of characters. It doesn't like work particularly well with a large amount of builds. This is a very narrow option. You're going to kind of do one thing. <clears throat> Pardon. But, you know. Well, that's... I mean, what, I mean, just you get your Primal Companion at third level, so you got 17 more levels to play with, and a pretty tough dog. But yeah, but you do want to commit levels to Ranger because this thing's durability and damage, or durability, I should say, is the only real thing that it scales with oh, your Ranger. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. This thing will die very quickly if you take three in Ranger and Leaf. So yeah. I do think you want to get 11 in this, but I do think past 11, you're probably fine to dip out. Um, I don't think you need chair spells. I don't even think chair spells are good. So, like, no. 11 levels here, nine levels in a full caster seems like a pretty easy route to explore. Like, I think nine Druid, 11 Beastmaster Ranger is a pretty clear option to go with. Um, all things considered, I'm really bummed out that they didn't rework the other features. I'm kind of a, it, it's ridiculous to me that exceptional training just doesn't work. Like it, it mechanically provides all it provides you is the last line of text, yeah. and the entire prior of it is just nothing like actual nothing, waste of text space because they didn't bother to update it. Um, I still think this, this thing's a solid B. It gives you a summonable ally, that summonable ally has a big impact on the game. This doesn't share scale with all of the powerful known quantum things. No Swift Quiver, no Crossbow Expert, no uh, Hunter's Mark. A lot of the bread and butter bonus action stuff Rangers want to do this doesn't work with, but it is a great adjacent option to those that gives you a different kind of play pattern. It gives you sort of a different established summoner archetype kind of thing where you're fighting alongside this companion. I think it's really sweet. I don't think it earns a B. Um, let's Beach see. Fury is really good. What's that? Beach, Beach Fury. Fury. The level eleven it level is, but you gotta three feature so slog good. it out 
to level 11 and and then you got to have your giant disappointment at level seven and keep going four more levels and uh, it hurts i really but, um, i would like to emphasize i think this third level feature is bananas good like it is genuinely unbelievably powerful it is a summon effect that doesn't require concentration that you can get back over a minute in a single first level spell slot like this is a really high impact kind of feature to have this definitely is weighted more i think than having a clunker feature at level seven that's just my opinion though yeah it and you know, I'm let down by the uh, capstone as well. I'll go, I'll bring it up to a C plus. But um, yeah, the I mean I'm basing all this on the third level feature, and then like yeah, Bestial Fury is good, but yeah, C plus is fine. Mm -hmm. All right, that was the Beast Master. Thank you, Sam, and thank you everyone for uh, joining us today. Let us know what you think down in the comments. I know we've got some Ranger fans out there, and uh. I know you're going to have some opinions. We'd love to hear them. So do that. And uh, also like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.